Hi, this is Kelsey Fukowski for APGov, and in this video we're going to be talking about a very important Sixth Amendment case called Gideon v. Wainwright, which is going to have significant implications for anybody arrested after 1963. So a little bit of background for you, a man named Clarence Gideon is arrested for allegedly smashing a window, stealing cigarettes, and around uh, $5 worth of money, and again, keep in mind this is 1961, from a pool hall. And he's an illiterate drifter, he's been arrested multiple times, and he cannot afford a lawyer. So, as you know, the Sixth Amendment does state that everybody has the right to an attorney or a lawyer, or counsel as it's known. However, what happens if you cannot afford one? Well, at this point, if you were arrested for a non-capital offense, meaning that it wasn't murder or something you know, extremely serious, you were not entitled to what we have today known as public defenders. So Gideon's nevertheless going to petition the court for a lawyer because uh, he is going to be facing a felony here. But he is denied, and he has to represent himself. And again, keep in mind, he's illiterate. And ultimately, he's not able to uh, basically provide himself with an adequate defense. He's convicted, and he's sentenced to five years in prison. Well, with the fact that he is illiterate, it is very impressive that uh, Clarence Gideon begins hitting the books at the prison library and studies law, and he ultimately is going to be filing a petition to the Court of Appeals that's going to be rejected, and then finally he's going to write another one uh, for what's called a writ of habeas corpus, and that will eventually be accepted by the Supreme Court of the United States. And again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, counsel was only provided for capital offenses at this point, not for things like petty theft. Ultimately, SCOTUS is going to hear the case, um, and it's not so much concerned with the individual case of Clarence Gideon, but really the larger picture concerning whether or not poor people should be entitled to a public defender in all criminal trials where your liberty is at stake, regardless of if it's petty theft or we're talking murder. And the SCOTUS decision here is unanimous across the board in favor of Clarence Gideon. Keep in mind that this is happening under the Warren Court, and you should be familiar with this, and especially if you're an AP Gov student, because the Warren Courts are known for the significant expansion of criminal rights. This is where you're also going to have a very famous case of Miranda v. Arizona, known as the Miranda Rights. That actually happens under the Warren Court. In addition, the Brown v. Board of Education case, although not involving criminal rights, is going to be decided in favor, of course, uh, in terms of desegregation in schools under the Warren Court as well. So the Warren Court is very well known for the expansion of civil rights and criminal rights quite significantly. But nevertheless, uh, in terms of their decision here, they're saying that the right to counsel is a fundamental right for both state and federal courts, meaning that if you're charged with a state or federal crime, you have the right to counsel. And this is going to be applied to all states through what is known as selective incorporation. Basically, this is applying this particular aspect of the Sixth Amendment to all 50 states. So regardless if you're in Hawaii, Alaska, Montana, New Jersey, Florida, Alabama, this ruling pertains to those all 50 states, and it's incorporated. Because back in the day when the Bill of Rights was written, it was only interpreted to apply to the national government, not the states. So over time, these rights have to be selectively incorporated, which many of them have been, through cases such as Clarence, uh, Gideon v. Wainwright. So the aspect of having the right to counsel in all criminal trials is, of course, going to be incorporated. It is important to note that this does not pertain to civil trials because that is not criminal. It is only involved where your liberty is at stake or some crime uh, or charge is against you. So ultimately, they're going to rule in their opinion uh, that the right to counsel is paramount towards due process, protecting your rights uh, when charged with a crime. And that basically is Clarence uh, Gideon's case in a nutshell that has significant implications for anybody who gets arrested, who cannot afford an attorney, one is going to be appointed for you.